Welcome to the RSP Film Room. I'm Matt Walden with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. We're going to take a look at Notre Dame wide receiver Equinemius St. Brown. and He's certainly considered one of the top wide receiver prospects in this draft. And when you look at his size, his height, his speed, ability to make the first man miss, some of his power in the open field to run through wraps or at least push through contact for extra yards, there's a lot to like about him especially the fact that he can win in the vertical game. He can take a hit and come down with the ball. Those are positives, absolutely positives. But is he a wide receiver one? Is he a primary guy? Well, he projects that way to a lot of people because of all the, the qualities that I mentioned. But when I watch his game and look at it up close, I think that he's not quite there, and it may be difficult for him to get there because – one of the things that's important about being a pass catcher is how well you track the football and how you do that in difficult situations. In situations we've seen thus far in just this highlight package, these are pretty standard throws, and he does a good job of tracking those. So that's good. That can make him a starter, can make him a contributor. I have a contributor grade for him right now. But to be the man, to be A.J. Green, Julio Jones, somebody along those lines, Somebody, even not even on that level, but still like a, maybe a Michael Thomas type of player. Someone who can be your primary receiver. You've got to beat tight man coverage and track the ball in difficult situations well and use your hands in the correct way in those situations to make the big plays. Right now I see him more as a complimentary receiver. And I'm going to show you some of these plays that I have questions about that he's going to have to improve upon to become that primary option. This should be an easy pitch and catch. You're going to see St. Brown slot left. He's going to work up field and then break to the outside again. He's got off coverage that he's going to deal with after he gets past the initial line with a swipe. Easy separation there. One hand to the ball, unable to bring it in. So let's look at that would-be catch that should have happened here. Now, this isn't the easiest catch to make, and it is a one-handed play, but you need, to, you need to meet it with your fingertips. He's meeting it with the palm. He has the ball strike the palm, and when the ball strikes the palm, yep, it's going to bounce off and rebound off, and he's in a tougher position to be able to hold on to the ball, and he's never able to control it. So, again, this is something that top pros are able to do. And he may be able to develop to this level, but you want to see him extend with his fingertips so that he can make that catch as opposed to letting the ball, the point, strike the palm. No opportunity to control the ball here. He's against Meeks. So you're going to watch him at the bottom of the screen. He's going to work up field. He's going to get separation. He's able to get one hand on the ball but it's incomplete. Now, he draws pass interference on the play, so that's great. But as he gets a separation, you wanna see him stack a little earlier and track the ball over his shoulder. Instead, he's looking back and waiting on the ball, and he's tipping off the ball to the cornerback to make this even more difficult. And now he's trying to extend through and hand fight through and turn and back his way to the ball. And at this point, he's mistracked the ball. He's not close enough to the ball. It goes through his hands that are fully outstretched. He had a better opportunity on this play. Instead of to engage physically, what you would have liked to have seen here is get that early separation, stack the defender immediately, veer, in, veer closer to the inside, and control the pace and track the ball over the inside shoulder to the outside shoulder with your back to the defender and make him run through you without having to back your way through here. And instead, you're, you're waiting on the ball you're, and you're opening yourself up to more conflict than you needed and also a tougher catch. And I've seen this on multi, in multiple games. I believe I saw him against NC State do this where he had an opportunity to make a big catch. And instead... He turns around too early and ends up backing his way towards the ball or backing his way from the ball and creating a difficult situation. He's got to make life easier on himself. And the best receivers 
understand how to track the ball in the situation a little better than this. And they're better at tracking the ball over their head. And I do have some cons questions about whether or not he tracks the ball well over his head. And he tries to compensate by creating these types of scenarios that actually are more difficult. Once again, I'm a little concerned about the ball tracking here. You're going to see him work that little inside out double move and see where the ball is and see how flat of a trajectory it is. Safety's coming over here. St. Brown hasn't stopped at all. He's just waiting on the ball and it's passive and the defender cuts this off. I like the move, turning his head to the inside, getting that one hard plan step to the inside and then working past the defender. But right here, as he turns, he turns a little late. He gauges the safety, turns, and at this point, it's too late. He doesn't really read the ball. He needs to track the ball a little earlier on this deeper route. And right here, he should be seeing the ball and noticing that it's on a low line and then turning to try and adjust to, to cut off number five. But number five cuts off number six. I mean, right here, he should see that and go, Oop, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to have to stop and try and win this ball doesn't see that and it's just a small pattern among others where tracking the football minor concern and if they turn out to be if it turns out to be a larger over a pat overall pattern with his game it could turn into a little bit more than a minor concern with him semi quote coats wasn't very good at tracking the football and you could see that a lot showing up in the pro game I wonder about this with him because these throws that continue to be over his shoulder, he either has to turn back to face it, or when he doesn't, he doesn't seem to notice that he makes has to make an adjustment until it's way too late. Here we are with another issue with tracking the ball. Second and 13, single left. Working outside, a little stop and go move. He gets separation. This is nice. He's got a good two steps on his man. Now he turns back for the ball. And look how he turns back to the ball with the man in his face and he's using an underhand catch technique. No way he's going to catch that. You've got to attack the ball. And number 36 is able to get his hands on him and kind of keep that arm down. But he's got to, he's got to time this better. Instead of reaching out with his hand there and trying to catch like that, one of the things that he could do on this particular play is right here, turn inside, stop, turn, jump, high point the ball. And then you've got your back to the defender. He stops, turns, and high points here. Instead of waiting for the ball to, to hit about right here, he can leap up and catch the ball about right here. It's the difference between about a step or two. Instead of catching it here at his chest level, or trying to, and catch it here about a half step earlier and extend for it. But because he doesn't do that, doesn't do it, number 36 is able to knock that ball away. Again, it's a tracking issue. It's a passive technique. He doesn't really have a great plan with that. He's waiting for the ball to come to him. And now there's his hands, both of his hands there. And he should have caught it anyway, you can see. But because it's trapped against his hands, it bounces off his, his, his chest, then hits his hands. He's not catching with his fingertips, and it's not an active catch technique. He's almost clapping on the, ball, the point of the ball, and the ball just squirts free. And also, he's got to work through number 36 to get to that. So again, attacking the route earlier, understanding, all right, here's where the ball is. Let me use that back arm to swipe, turn, and leap. Instead, he just swipes and then just leans away and then passively tries to trap it and can't hold on to it. This is the difference between a primary receiver in the NFL and a player with primary receiver size and speed, but not the skills, at least not yet. So there you have it, Equinemius St. Brown. Is he a top prospect? 
lot of people think he is. I can see how he might get there at some point. I certainly think that he's a contributor right now. I have a contributor grade for him, which means, hey, look, you make him a wide receiver two, a wide receiver three, put him in four wide receiver sets, he might be able to become a consistent producer in an NFL offense in that capacity. But ask him to beat the top corner within the next year or two and to be able to win some of those 50-50 balls or make more difficult tight coverage plays in rhythm where he's going to have to attack the ball better. He's going to have to win against tight man coverage and be able to make good turns and track the ball in a, in a way where that he's using an active technique to win the ball first. I have real questions about that. And that is the difference between guys like Michael Thomas and A.J. Green and Julio Jones and guys like Brandon LaFell or, some, you know, an, another second or th third tier receiver who can deliver starter production for you if called upon, but not be the absolute man. Thanks again for watching. For more RSP Boiler Room videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, the RSP Film Room, and my site, www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.